Mabika, Mabika. Good day, everyone. Four o'clock. Uh, I suppose uh, we ought to start now, and then people will join us um, as we go along. So, welcome everyone to. Oh, sorry. Let me sit. Let me sit. Let me sit. Let me sit. Okay, for the purposes of the recording. Uh, welcome again, Mabrika, Mabrika. Welcome to this uh, special occasion, a uh, very special event as part of Kalina Week 2022, uh, which has to do with the launching of a video on Kalinago language initiatives to be followed by a general discussion on the way forward next steps for the uh, development um, of the Kalinago language here in the Kalinago space and elsewhere in Dominica, I would imagine. So, without further ado, um, let me invite the shaman, um, Mabrika, Gerard Langley, to give us some spirituality. Yes, that's right. for the side of the constituency, Chief Obutu Lorenzo Sanford. We have the manager of KBA, Gwyneth Frederick at the back, and the principal, Ms. John at the back. We have our PS um, Britain, our shaman, Gerald Langley, past chief cultural officer, Robert Lawrence, KTV, the rest of the media that is us today, we extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you in the Kalinago space. This is an important landmark in the development of the Kalinago language, which we can simply say the next step. Where do we go from here? A lot of effort has been put in development and the restoration of the Kalinago language by a few of us. And from that, most of our work can be seen and heard on DBS, Monday to Friday, the calendar the word for the day. Just over 100 plus persons of the Kalinago territory has chosen a Kalinago name 
and many more on the outside that are not resident in the Kalenda territory have taken a step and to rename themselves a Kalenda name. That is to demonstrate the awareness and the interest in people taking part in restoring our Kalila, Kalilago language. It is our language. When the Europeans came, they made us speak in our language. It was destroyed by them, like many of our cultures. The most, the bigger impact was our language. And today, you now we have go back and search our tongue and what we used to say before. Some of them uh, are we first today. We are not even aware that we speak Kalilago. So this afternoon, I just want to welcome you once more again to enjoy yourself. But at the end of it, of this video, we will you know brainstorm and see what's the next step for our Kalilago language. Welcome everybody. I hope, of course, that word will be repeated all the time. It simply means merci, thank you in Kalinago. Okay, let me now invite um, the president of Keck, Mr. Raymond Lawrence. As you know, Keck is one of the major partners in the project um, that uh, resulted in the production of that video. So let us invite uh, Mr. Raymond Lawrence, President Keck, who vini banu yondemo katpao message. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Master of Ceremonies, Gregory Rabes, Washla. <laughs> um, so let me say good afternoon to everybody and recognize in a special way the Honorable Minister for Kalinago Affairs, Honorable Kosia Frederick, and at the head table as well, the Kalinago Chief, Lorenzo Sanford, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Youth, Mrs. Sylvani Burton, the manager of the KBA, Mrs. Gwyneth Frederick, members of the Kalinago Council, Gregory himself, who is the vice president of the Committee Poeti Creole, and was very instrumental, in fact, in making this project become a reality. Uh, members of the media, I want to recognize GIS and MO News. <laughs> Thank you very much for making the effort to be here this afternoon. I really appreciate that, um, ladies and, and gentlemen. This afternoon is the launch of the video documentary on Kalinago language initiatives. And this launch, of course, forms part of activities for Kalinago Week. And I want to take the opportunity to congratulate the Minister, the Chief, the Kalinago Council, the Kalinago Events Committee, and all those involved in, in the preparation and the planning and the organization and implementation of Kalinago Week. Uh, we've had it, of course, several years annually. Uh, this year seems to have taken on a special sort of extra <laughs> promotion, maybe, and significance, but I really think it sort of gives a signal in a way that um, the, the, the Kalinago culture and heritage, to my mind, is even becoming stronger and stronger. I know in the past, almost every time we went out to, to uh, festivals like Carifesta, we always included uh, uh, such a delegation from the Kalinago territory as part of the national delegation. And all, they always did a, a wonderful job, and up to last year, we went to Dubai and we had five Kalinago members from the Karina Cultural Group with us and they did a beautiful job up there as well. So the launch today is organized by Comité Poeti Creole in collaboration with the Cultural Division and the Kalinago Events Committee. And the video is entitled Kalinago Language Initiatives and it features various initiatives being currently undertaken by the Kalinago in relation to the language itself. The documentary was produced by Keck as part of a collaboration project between Keck and the University of Bedfordshire and it was funded by the Arts and Humanities Research Council of the United Kingdom. Keck worked in collaboration with the late Dr. Violet Coffey and we say late because unfortunately she passed 
in December last year, very suddenly. Um, so, you know, we honor her memory and we want to thank her posthumously as well for the kind of work that she put into, into this. Um, and this video is just one component of the audiovisual documentation carried out under this collaboration project. The other projects included um, a Belle Gold, a collection of Belle songs by the Tredibel Cultural Group. And we have another video on Quail in Education that we hope to launch during the month of October as part of the celebrations. The Belle Gold album, which was um, produced by Tradi Bell, was launched in May this year as part of Dom Festa celebrations. So Kek, I think as most of us know, has been very instrumental in various projects promoting the language, especially the Quail language. And we are extremely happy that we can also play a role in promoting the Kalinago language as well through this project. So we expect that the, the video on Kalinago language will contribute to the ongoing promotion of the Kalinago language in the territory, raise awareness of the importance of the language, and of course strengthen the Kalinago identity and culture. Language, to my mind, lies at the heart of identity and culture. One of the first things which identify a people is their language. Language is one of the most important forms of communication within any group or community. The language influences their oral communication, their writings, their songs, their storytelling, and their passing down of traditions from one generation to another. So language is very important. In recent times, the Kalinago have certainly been making special efforts to research and to revitalize the language and to create greater awareness, understanding, and appreciation of the Kalinago language among the Kalinago people and also among other sectors of our population in Dominica. The Kalinago word every morning is quite popular and um, you know people are learning to at least put on some of the words of the Kalinago language every morning on DBS. So language is a very important part of our heritage and culture. It's also an important part of our education. Through language, we can describe experiences and remember them. We can create, invent, influence our environment and respond to it. Through language, we can pass on to other generations our collective accumulated experience in the form of books, recordings, legends, knowledge. And this collected experience stored in language is a major part of our culture and heritage and identity as a people. So in the case of the Kalinago language, while we have made some progress in promoting the language, we now need to take it to another level, as we say and even some further steps, and begin to teach more of it to our youth and our children. We now have to give it more room and space within our educational system. I realize that this process will take time, but we need to continue to take those necessary steps to continue to promote and to preserve the Kalinago language and to facilitate the progress of the language development in Dominica. And I want to suggest that maybe the creation and adoption of a language policy, a national language policy in Dominica, would certainly help significantly with that process. I would like to believe that our video launch today, and also Kalinago Week, and the work of the Kalinago Council and the Ministry of Kalinago Affairs, the ongoing program like the Kalinago Word on DBS, which I mentioned, and the promotion of the language in our schools, will contribute to and stimulate the ongoing process of validating and creating greater awareness among the population among the, about the importance of the Kalinago language in our culture, our education system, in our national identity. Yes, language lies at the heart of all these aspects of our lives and hence the reason 
why it is so important. So I wish to encourage the work of all those involved in the promotion of the Kalinago language and let us all strive to help the promotion and use of the language to grow from strength to strength. I want to encourage all of us, no matter what work we are in, no matter what part of the society you know, we are involved in, no matter what part of Dominica's development, we are playing a role. All of us, I think, can play a role in helping to promote the language in one way or the other. So um, I wish special success to the rest of your activities as part of Cabinago Week. I think it's been going very well. And um, a special thanks again to Emo News and GIS. Thank you very much. <laughs>
innocence. So moving away from the from the, the plantation name or the European name to a name that is sort of uh, defines them as a kind of a person. Fever, yes. Uh, 
Papiru. And it is spelled A B I R U. Papiru. P A. Well, thank you very much again. I just want to wish you all folks in the coming up for territory. Let's be Maprika, Maprika. Take care, all the best. We've been having for the, for the past couple of months uh, 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 a name pro, a name program on, on, on our national radio station where every day one of our researchers go out there and give a word for the day. Right now we have a program on the radio. Every day, every day of the booking week, we're out. It's very important that I think that the people have been very, very appreciative. It's a couple of people who have been able to find them, and they have to find them. 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 They have to find them.
there's, there's, there's avenues of the technology that we can do that obviously we should be thinking about too. Yeah. Also, we have the language solve. Uh, people ask, you know, like, so because that, that is something that can, you can do that pretty quick. Uh, things like numbers and a few sentences, uh, um, things like I am hungry, I am thirsty, you know, what I what you would like to do. You could learn that very, very, very quick in, 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 in song. Some of them are not going to pass it on their salary because if I want to make sure they have a good job, they will not be able to do it. And if they are not going to be able to do it, they will not be able to do it. 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 Their own language. I mean, so we have lost language. 
Yes, um, nice. Uh, let's give the video a round of applause. So um, we're going to have, this takes us to the general discussion. Um, but, um, before we get into the, the look across the board, let us have, we're going to have three special um, um, reactions. Uh, first from the Chief Sanford, Lawrence Sanford, uh, then um, the Honourable Minister, Jose Frederick, and then Ulson Matthew, who is with us. Ulson, uh, um, you can join us. Ulson, um, you can join us on the table. So, um, as soon as he takes his seat, then we will... Um, here. As soon as he takes his seat, then we will um, have the first reaction from uh, the Cardinal Yes, uh, over to you, uh, over to Paris, Mr. Gerard Langley, and 
Mr. Gregory Roberts himself, because I think we have to consider and recognize we are calling our goals. And if we do not take this bold step to revive in our own language, then who will do it for us as or set the set the steps for us as young individuals? Because I'm a young man myself. And I am very grateful for the initiative that is being done. And as I, as I must continue to say, we must explore all avenues in reviving our language. We have to reach to the media, uh, every media platform that we can in reviving our language. Um, with, the, with the video presentation, we had the elders themselves involved, very much deeply involved, and the programs in place that are reaching out to the youth. As you could see, the youth were very interactive in the programs or the, the projects that were being done. For them to be part of it, the renaming of themselves as young people. And we, we have to be very mindful of it, because it, it's these simple steps that will definitely grow in the future and make us, and make we the, the language more lively for us. So I must say it is a very great video, it is very important for us, and I take it very, I take it very much to heart. And I, we, I as chief and the councillors are very much involved in helping in the restoration of this language. It is us is what makes us different as a people and I would just want to say thank you to Mr. P Mr. Paris, Mr. Roberts, Gerard Langley himself and let's do what we can and continue it in reviving our language. The Ministry of Education is on board already. We had a very great spell in the competition yesterday and we definitely see the young people are very much involved. So let us continue in, in that footsteps and let us continue to have them on board. Let us embrace them because they are the future. They are the ones who will continue and build upon that language for us, for, for we, this generation, have to put in place for them to continue. So I would just like to say let's continue in the restoration of our language. It is for us. It will be very beneficial for the young people and the identity of us, the Kalina people. Thank you. Thank you, Ubuntu, for these um, reaction comments. I'm sure you'll intervene as the discussion goes on again. And also highlighting the role of the youth and the importance of the youth to carry on, really, uh, the traditions of the Kalinago, uh, not just in the language, but in other aspects of the Kalinago culture. So let's have a reaction from the Honourable Minister Kozia Frederick, who is the MP for this area as well. Thank you very much, Washa. I just want to acknowledge the Ubuntu here, P.S. Bitten, the Chair the former PAL reps, um, Daru and Grano, the manager of the KBA, the staff of the, of the Quattro Division, Staff of the Ministry of Environment, School Principal, the media, KTTV, um, ML News, um, also GIS. So I, so it's the first time I'm seeing this, this, this some presentation. I knew I, I had a conversation many moons ago with Washla. Washla came to my home, messed up on my living room for a bit, <laughs> installed his gadgets, and we had a conversation. I didn't realize Washla that to that. I don't mean to have, have be a big star in all of that um, <laughs> that videography, but you see, I'm very very impressed with with, with how 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 it was neatly put together, capture the voices um, of, of the elders, uh, Marika, Ichiabu, um, um, Niko Tuguru, and um, just to capture those voices and, 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 and really tell what is it we're doing as as a people to keep our, our language alive. So I, I I was really really excited about this and. And I'm happy that we could put it together in such a way that we really tell the world how we truly feel about our language. And I'm also very, very happy that the KEK is on board on this initiative. Because the, the, the Creole culture, what we have now known to be to know as the Creole culture, 
has a big pillar in it that is Kalinago. So it is 18th century European, African, and Kalinago constructs. And so like a few different free stones. And so, so when, when you speak about Creole culture, a big part of it, like you said, throughout the narrative, plants, animals, names of villages, concepts like Kudme, general proverbs, all of these things that we, we have in common conversation uh, in our daily lives are kind of pieces. And so it's really, really good to have the people of, of the Creole champions understanding that a uh, key pillar in all of that career development is, is the, the, the kind of piece. And I think the, 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 the videography was very, very good. I think that the voice of Nico Tuguru uh, doing the Creole, because I struggle with the Creole myself, mm -hmm. and, and to really speak it in a, in a very clear and concise way and to tell that narrative was, was very important. And I think the, the, the Shaman, Mabrika, speaking, and with his wife also, speaking about how the struggles they would have gone through and how they have developed those parts of the language over time. So I really want to say um, kudos to him. And to say that uh, blessed memory, um, um, Dr. Violet Coffey, who took us in this space. Um, she is a poor, she was a poor food trail champion, I think gone too soon. Um, and I know that um, the work that she started off sort of set up a template. Yeah, that is the beginning, um, Washer. And I know you, you uh, a very avid, um, Creole man yourself, and very interested in the kind of heritage and culture. With the leadership from um, Raymond here, Raymond Lawrence here, we will really do more to look at the renaming of, of our Canada spaces, the, 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 the um, highlighting of our Canada communities across the country. Some of them are, are only related to in terms of Creole, but we have to bring that back, bring it back to places like Bawi and Kalibishi and uh, Koliho and all those kind of names. So, it is a wonderful start. And I think, Washla, we have all words colored for us. Thank you. I have heard. Yes, we actually do, because um, this interactive session is just about that, actually, to determine what is the work that is cut out for us over the next few years. So that is what this discussion is going to unfold and looks like. Let us now invite the Chief Cultural Officer, um, Earth Matthew, uh, to give us a reaction. Thank you. Thank you very much, Washla, and a special good afternoon to all present. Or should I say, Mabrika, Mabrika? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Um, I was asked to do a reaction on the video. I am actually, like the Honorable Minister, seeing it for the first time. So my reaction is the, the honest feedback, right? So I mean, can't get better than that. It's not something that I had time to prepare for. I was making notes as soon as it was going around and so on. So that is part of it. But I want to say that it is something that was much needed and probably overdue, but never too late. So it's a good start and a great initiative. And I would like to make a few comments, recommendations, but um, not saying that it probably has not started already, that the process has not started, but that is my initial reaction to what I saw. And I want to start by the queer language. I know it's about the Kalinago language, but the Creole language is something, there's a lot of work ongoing with regard to the Creole language. I think it is a good starting point when you look at the work that has been done with Kek and so on. Look at what worked, what has worked for Kek and all other activists that, that promote the Creole language, see what works and apply it to the Kalinago language. That would be a good starting point. I have also noticed that the Creole language over many decades has filtered its way into the territory. So, not that it's a bad thing, but it is present. So, it just shows the inclusion, and I would like that inclusion to be across the board. So, even if um, the Kalinago language is being taught to the Kalinago people, but we want to learn something too. So, the initiative on the radio is a very good idea that everybody can get involved, not just within the territory where you will probably feel the need or feel like it is lost. But that would be a good place or a good way for everybody to embrace the Kalinago language. The only way to get these things done is through practice. It will not happen overnight, it will not happen in your mind, it will not happen by reading a book once or twice. It is something that has to be done on a daily basis through practice. And um, I was happy to see the young one pushing the, the Kalinago language and so on. And uh, that just says that. And the same applies to the Creole language. The school curriculum is very important. 
and of course the Kalinagos territory is a good starting place, but we want to see that island-wide as well. Even if it's something as simple as vocabulary, because it's a starting point. So vocabulary, yes, you will know what you know what it means, but then over time you will develop conversation and so on, and that will come as time goes by. Um, uh, publications. I saw a book that I would like to get my hands on. Um, but other publications, uh, a dictionary, you can start something, just build vocabulary, and as time goes by, you revise versions of people, different people do different things. So there is like documentation of what you want. And now we live in the era of social media and things, three of the four cameras there are phones. So we're in a time where the information is accessible, throw it out there and put it on the platforms that the, the youth are familiar with and what they, they like using. And um, again, just want to end by saying, just make it inclusive. All of us can be involved in it because we want to learn part of the culture. We feel like we are part of the Kalinago family as well. Uh, it's fine. Yes, we feel like we're part of the Kalinago territory and community as well. And we want to learn some of it. Thank you. I have a very, very important contribution, very important points um, made by, by the Chief Cultural Officer question of inclusion, you know, the question of publications and things of that nature. Let me ask Prosper, where's Prosper? Prosper, can you come up, please? Prosper, can you come up, Okay, uh, we are going to do the interactive discussion. Uh, as Prosper is one of the sort of uh, a mover and shaker, a poto mayok in the, in the thing, so he will to get here and me will sort of help along the, with the interaction. Okay. All right, um, okay, so the floor is now open. Um, maybe I could use my mic to, to, yes. to and we'll share all my time. Yeah. Okay. So let me, anybody wants to make, uh, no, we're, we're looking at really almost like a shopping list, but people can make um, comments as well. But uh, the focus is to um, like recommendations, suggestions for the next steps or what you think we can do, whether it's booklets, videos, comic books, whatever. That's what we're looking for, a shopping list of ideas. And what we can do in the schools, what we can do in the cultural groups, what we can do at the level of the council, um, at the political elite, um, you know, you know, by it's like, yeah, power of their wisdom. So, anybody, mm -hmm. great. Um, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to give a name? Okay, I'm going to give a little bit. Yeah. Uh, what I can tell you about. Uh, I think it's a good initiative, but I saw something. Uh, there's something the critic. We are, um, you spoke of the word for the day. You, um, one of you mentioned it, I think it was as before. But we have a word for the day on um, DBS, and then you have Stephen and Michelle and her, um, interacting. And then somebody come back again and say, oh, we have a word of the from the years. So I think um, there's, a, there's a little um, bridge that you, um, you have to fix it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, so no, we don't want to make the thing too like strict and formal and everybody yeah. just like a kind of way, you know. Um, in fact, we might even shut down the cameras. <laughs> People feel intimidated. But it's already, it's yet, yeah, because that is really for, it's not necessarily for the cameras, but it's for us now, in that sense. But just by saying, that is what it is, yeah? But, I mean, it's recording. You want to make it as relaxed and informal now. So all these sort of quote-unquote formalities are already done, which let us be much more free. Community, let us be real. Yeah. So, yeah.
Okay, thanks, Rex. Um, I just recognize everybody who's here, all the officials, um, friends, well wishers. I, I want to start off by saying that um, the the um, recording and film was really well done. The quality and everything was nice, the um, language, the everything it was good. And I want to congratulate Prosper in particular very, very much because when I was um, the Ubuntu, Prosper was in the council with me and um, we were doing we were talking language since then. As a matter of fact, that is where I, I named myself before the ceremonies. And all my children and my grandchildren have had number names. And the Ghana did the same thing when he came up with the owner, I am. So we may be gone a little while, but I'm happy. I'm saying that because Prosper continued. That, that, um, that movement, and now we've got to, you know, to the baptismal part where the, the Wiku is being poured. I hope it's Wiku man being put on the head, you know, not water, because water is Christianity. So you have to put Wiku. Um, so it's really a nice vibe that um, it's got to that stage. And um, I, I um, also want to say that the, oh, I, I want to suggest very strongly, Mr. Barra. About on the subject very strongly that it is probably the right time next year as we do a 120 celebration of our territory that we ask or we organize or I don't know the process that the registry of books that also for Canada whole needs can be included on our book certificates. Because I think it costs a thousand eight hundred dollars to add your name or change your name. So I think it, it seems we have gone that far and we're doing all that work. I think it would be nice if we can or it would be add to it. Or would you? It would add you have the mix? I see my mix. Oh what? Um so yes, I'm saying that I think it is really a, a, a wonderful thing if we can um, approach it. I think the registrar, um, the registrar now is this Vincia Ogis, um, Francois, I think it is. And I just, I just think that we can, we can do that. It would be good to have, what do you call it, amnesty, when you have an opportunity to come in and do something, Mr. Hill, yeah, it's amnesty. Good. So let's say for the whole of next year, so we can include our names, and that afterwards, um, in 2024, persons will now if you have your name, you automatically put it, and if you don't put it, then you will have to pay for it. So I, I would just like to suggest that as, as something we can, we can do. Um, the other thing is that Prosper and I, in 2020, had an opportunity to, to be part of the Garifuna language teaching in St. Vincent. And um, Prosper, you remember, there were some good little vibes, the way they bring the language across. And um, in case you forget, uh, we need to probably, you know, check it out. Because, because again, it wasn't just strict language. They had these little songs, simple songs that, that they wrote. And uh, at the language, at the language um, teaching, persons would learn it, you know, just like three lines of, of, of a song. And you would really finish the session learning that song, you with that song. The other thing I remember they had was um, the puzzle. You know, they had puzzles made out and, and persons finding out how to, um, how to name cat and, and dog and, and bone and all that. By, by doing it, it was, it was fun, it was really fun. So I'm just saying that plus we need to include that as, as we move um, in, in, in the language, okay? And for us, I, 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 I don't know, I always, I always when, I, when, I, when I write on WhatsApp, I always say Mambrika to my colleagues, to my, my people, I always say Mambrika. Remember that post? I always say Mambrika. Sometimes it tells me Mambrika, other times it just tells me <laughs> but um, what I'm just saying, you never have these tips, I'm just kidding. Um, what I'm saying, even those things, you know, we write each other, Mabrika, when we end ending, we use the word, we, we have to do that, it helps, it helps in our, in our language, in our language development too. Okay, plus the, the other thing again is that I know that uh, Kisha Joseph, of St. Lucia, studied the Kainawo language in depth. Um, she studied out at, um, I think it was Minnesota. Arizona, University in Arizona in Tucson, and um, I don't know what is the connection we have, but that is somebody who actually went through the whole university program, the linguistic and Kalilango language, and um, I just believe we should probably, if we are not in contact, we probably make some contact to, to help, irrespective of the fact that it's, it's from St. Lucia, you know that 
you had a very good pattern recommending that she study our language. So that's another good for her. Thanks. We have now come to the end of yes, the anyway, launching yes, of the Kalinako so language video documentary. We would like so, to thank yeah, everyone sorry. for joining um, us live we and do you have yourself a pleasant evening. Once again, this has been the launch of the Kalinako language video documentary. Raise your hands, please, so we can know who you are. Okay, come from.